amazing recipe. I am so excited, yet another day, because today at the Young's house, Jeannie Young is gonna share with you all how easy it is to make delicious, cheesy all gratin potatoes. This recipe right here, amazing. So easy to make, doesn't require a lot of ingredients, and if you make a Jeannie Young style, it's gonna be so tasty. Y'all never had my cheesy all gratin potatoes. Better make you some. Here are the lovely ingredients you're gonna need. You're gonna need some fresh potatoes. Now, the type of potato I decided to use is Idaho, and you can see that I've sliced them down into medallion slices. You're gonna need some cheese. We have shredded sharp cheddar, we have shredded mozzarella, and we also have some Velveeta, the smallest block. You will need some butter, you're gonna need some flour. We have heavy whipping cream, two condensed milk, and we have a really interesting ingredient, a sweetened condensed milk. Got a couple spices so we can make this thing taste good. So we have onion and garlic powder in here, salt, pepper, and parsley flakes. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this fun recipe, Jeannie Young style. Easter is right around the corner. You all are looking for that perfect side dish to put on your loved one's dinner table. Guess what? This is the recipe. Who doesn't love potatoes? The world loves potatoes. Mix it with the all rotten cheesy sauce and you have a match made in heaven. This recipe, I can't brag about how easy it is and how delicious it is because it's so tasty and it's so easy. So now, uh, I like to use the Idaho potatoes for this recipe. So we're just gonna peel them down just like so in this manner. I hope y'all are having a great day today. Let me know in the comment section below, have you ever had all rotten potatoes? If you haven't, you're in for a treat. So now that we have our potato nice and peeled, let me show you how I sliced them. Just quarter inch size thickness. Okay, and try your best to make them all the same thickness. That way they can cook um, the, at the same time. Because if you have some that's really thin, then you have some that's thick. When you're, boy, when you're cooking them, they'll cook unevenly. So try your best. All right, so now I wanna talk about something. In the past, I have made scallop potatoes or all gratin potatoes, and I made them a little different. And what I would do is I would make a beautiful cheese sauce, put them into the pan, throw them into the oven, and they would cook forever and a day. But guess what? Jeannie Young got smart, because guess what we're gonna do? We have our beautiful potatoes, we've rinsed them off with cold water several times until the water has become clear. And when the water becomes clear, you rinse off a lot of the starch from the potatoes. We are going to take these potatoes, I'm gonna take them to the stove behind me, I'm gonna boil these babies. I'm gonna par cook them. I'm gonna par boil them half of the way. That way, when they go in the oven, they don't have to cook forever in a day. Yes, and I love it, and it, it's just the best way to do it, okay? It's definitely the best way to do it, all right? So now, let's get these into some cold salted water, salt your water. Let's boil them, not until they're fork tender, because we don't want these to turn into mush, but cook them half the way. And when they're done, we're gonna drain them, and I'm gonna come back and show you how to make this cheese sauce that is just gonna, it, it's gonna blow your mind. Okay, so before we get started, I wanna talk about your cheese options. Honestly, you can use whatever type of cheese that you love, but I feel like this um, pair of using the Velveeta block is the smallest one. Mozzarella is gonna give you that cheesy pull that the world loves, right? And then sharp cheddar that's gonna kinda get you right there. Give you that little tang that I love. Now, if you like hot pepper, cheese, provolone, absolutely, you can use those. Okay, now there are people out there that will say, oh no, uh, Gina, you should be taking the cheese and shredding it yourself. But if you want to, if you don't have a lot of time to shred cheese, go ahead and get it you know, in the bag already shredded. It's never let me down. The shredded cheese has never let me down. So that's what we're gonna use today. So we're going to take a little over a half a stick of butter. 
salted or unsalted. It's really up to you. Let's go ahead and put a little over a half a stick of butter right here into our pan. And we're gonna get that butter hot, bubbly, and melty. Once the butter melts, we're gonna put in equal amounts of flour so we can make a roux. Fat and flour will begin to make our roux. And then we're going to incorporate a couple of milks and our cheese to make this easy, delicious cheese sauce, Dina Young style. Let's go ahead and cut some of our Velveeta cheese. I love the flavor. The Velveeta cheese gives macaroni and cheese or all gratin potatoes. It really brightens it up and gives it a nice rich taste along with the um, carnation milk. The carnation milk does something special also. So uh, I'm so excited. This is a recipe that you can put on your dinner table for, for Easter. Your family is gonna be so happy that you decided to make this. Do something different. You know, do something different this year for Easter. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to attach a video that you all would love to watch to the end of this video. And I, I made deviled eggs the other day. I made beautiful, delicious deviled eggs that you've probably never seen before. Um, I'm gonna attach that video to the end of this video so you can check it out so you can make that and bring it to your family's dinner table as well. Let's get started with our roux. Okay, so we have hot, bubbly, melty butter. We're gonna then add flour. At any time, do I, I do not want this. This should never look like plaster. Never ever. The flour and the butter should come together in such a way. And just gradually bring in the flour into the melted butter just like this. You don't have to rush it. And then once everything is nice and incorporated, I'm gonna come back and show you what consistency you're actually looking for. If you take a look down at our roux, you will see the consistency that we're looking for. All right, just like so. And we wanna cook this for around about four minutes because we want that raw flavor of the flour to cook off because by I, no means do you want this to taste like, you don't want any hint of that flour taste. So cooking it for about four to five minutes will cook off that raw flour taste. So now let's go ahead and put in a can of evaporated milk. And once we get that can in, what I'd like for you to do is go ahead and start stirring in your roux with the one can of evaporated milk. And then we're gonna go in with heavy whipping cream. Heavy whipping cream and the evaporated milk really makes for a rich dish. You know, it, it makes you feel warm inside. It makes you think of the holidays. All right, okay, so let's get some heavy whipping cream in, just like so. Ooh, way, there you go. Mm -hmm. And once this comes up to a nice temperature, it gets nice and warm, we're gonna then um, incorporate our small amount of the Velveeta cheese. It's gonna begin to make our cheese sauce and make the sauce nice and velvety. Let's go ahead. This has came up to a nice temperature. It's nice and warm. I like to break down the Velveeta just like so um, because it, it'll melt faster. Otherwise, it, it can take a long time for this Velveeta to melt if you don't break it down like we did today. Okay, so let's give that a nice mix around. Beautiful, but if you look at it, you'll see that it is a little thick. Okay, so what would you do in that situation? Well, we're going to add some more um, condensed milk, evaporated milk just like so, beautiful. Once the Velveeta begins to melt, then we're going to incorporate our mozzarella and our shredded cheese, or your favorite cheese that you will be using. The potatoes are cooking up, and I want to remind you, don't forget to put like two pinches of salt in with your potatoes to give them nice flavor. Okay, so now let's go ahead, incorporate sharp cheddar, just like so. And like I said, please feel free to, um, if you wanna get the block of cheese and shred it yourself, that's fine, okay? Mozzarella going in, oh wait, that's when we really get excited. Look at this, mm -mm -mm. So at this point, the pan is nice and hot, the uh, milks are really warm, 
and you can turn the burner all the way down to low right now. Come on in and take a look, take, take a look. And you can already see it coming together really quickly. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. And if at any time, let's just say, you turn around and you look at your cheese sauce and it's way too thick, what do you do? You put some heavy whipping cream or some of your condensed milk into the mixture until you get the consistency that you're looking for. But for this recipe, I have to be honest, this is what I want your cheese sauce to look like. Come on in. I, I, I need your cheese sauce to look like this. Make it some. Mm, mm, mm. Our potatoes are done. They're not fully cooked, but we've started the cooking process. So now take a look at them. They're still intact, they're not mushy, they're not falling apart, but I'm just gonna repeat myself. You do this so they're not cooking in the oven forever in a day. Now we got this cheese sauce. We gotta season that cheese sauce. In this ramekin, I have onion and garlic powder. I'm not gonna be shy to put a nice amount in there. I need flavor. If you don't have flavor, you know, it ain't gonna taste good. You need seasoning in order for it to taste good. A little bit of dried parsley flakes just to make it nice and pretty. Got to have some black pepper. Not too much. And you got to have some salt. Not too much. Okay? Because please keep in mind that salts are in cheeses. Okay? So just know your balance. Always start off with a little bit and then you can add to. If you go to taste the cheese sauce and you think, well, heck, I need some more seasoning. Well, put some more seasoning in. Okay? So now, we're going to take this gorgeous sauce. Now I want you to look at it. Come in and look at mine. Look at the consistency that I have here. This is what I need yours to look like. If it's too thick, remember what I said. It's okay to put heavy cream or to put the condensed milk into the mixture to thin it out. Okay, so what happens next? Well, I'm going to show you right now. Really gets interesting. Well, what about the sweetened condensed milk? Gina, because you got that ingredient there and I am so confused about the sweetened condensed milk. Well, I tell you what, let's just talk about it really quickly. So, you all that are familiar with me, or if you're not familiar with me, when I make baked macaroni and cheese, I put two tablespoons of sweetened condensed milk, and it kind of gives you like that umami flavor. Make them say, mm, mommy, where'd she get this recipe from? That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna, we're gonna round the sauce off and really make it taste different. Is it gonna make it sweet? No, nope, it's not gonna make it sweet. It's gonna make it taste delicious. Okay, so what we're gonna do, let's put the cheese sauce in with the potatoes, and then we'll stir in our sweet and condensed milk, just like so. Okay, everyone, take a look. We poured the cheese sauce on. Yes, we did, and look at what we got. Let's go ahead, and I'm not using a measuring spoon. I'm using a house tablespoon. We're gonna put two in there. Okay, I know there's some skeptical people out there. Don't be skeptical about this. Don't miss the recipe. <laughs> Don't miss this good recipe, y'all. Oh, All right, so now let's go ahead, mix it in, and take the time to really get it well incorporated. Make sure that sweetened condensed milk, and I assume if you wanted to, you could um, put the sweetened condensed milk in when you're making your cheese sauce. You're putting your spices and all that good stuff in. Now, once I get this well incorporated, we're gonna take some sharp cheddar, put it on the top, and we're gonna cover this with foil. We will be cooking it in the oven on 355 degrees until it's done. Now, the last 10 minutes of the cooking process, we're going to take our aluminum foil off and so the cheese can get hot, bubbly, and golden brown. But for right now, I want you to cover this. When I come back, we'll put the cheese on. Anytime you think your sauce is too thick, even after you have it into the pan, uh -huh. pour a little bit of evaporated milk in there. Okay, because that's honestly what I did. I put just a little bit in, because one thing that I don't want is I don't want this to get dried out while it's in the oven. And something else that will help prevent this from drying out in the oven is putting foil on it. Okay, so now that we have our cheese on, we're gonna put foil on this. This is going in the oven, 300. 55 degrees just like so and when I come back I'm going to say an amazing prayer and you're going to get the first bite. Okay everyone so our cheesy all gratin potatoes they're done. 
Now, what did I do to make sure that it was done? Well, I went in with the fork and the corner edge, and I'm gonna show you. Went in with the corner edge and I tasted one of my potatoes, making sure that it, the potato was nice and tender itself, and also making sure that the cheese sauce has done what I'm looking for it to do. I wanted to hold those cheesy all gratin potatoes together in such a way. So now we're gonna make our way over to the stove when I come back, or the oven when I come back, and so you can see what consistency you're looking for. And now what happens after this? Well, we take the foil off, let it cook in the oven for about 10 minutes so that cheese can get hot, bubbly, and golden brown, and dinner will be served. Hopefully you all can see, let me see. Look at that, I went right in to the corner edge, looking for the consistency of the sauce. Potatoes are nice and tender. Now let's throw it back in, get that cheese hot, bubbly, golden brown, when I come back and we'll taste it together. I just thought I'd show you all what we're having for dinner today. So I got some beautiful orange roughy frying up. We got some yellow squash here that we're cooking and we're gonna have that with our cheesy all gratin potatoes. Take a look at it, everybody. Gina Young's cheesy all gratin potatoes, make you some. Listen here, everybody, if you all enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Tell your family and friends and everyone you know, hey, tell the whole world about Gina Young, what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for this beautiful meal today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Take a look. We're going inside. We're going inside. Oh my goodness. I couldn't be more excited. I got to show you. Got to show you what it looks like and what you're going to have for your Easter dinner. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, it is heavenly. Look, 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 look. Oh my goodness. Cheesy all gratin potatoes. Make it so. <laughs> oh wait, go ahead, just take the, take the whole plate. It's too hot for me to try right now. But I tell you what, I'm, I'm gonna. I have to. If it's hot or not, I gotta try it. Let's blow it. Y'all, this is so good. My goodness. Mm, mm, mm. Make yourself. If you don't make this, you are definitely gonna mess out. Mm, mm. Woo, God bless. Mm, mm, mm. Good night. That's so good. Just one more look in the inside. Look at that. That's what all rotten potatoes should look like. And this is what they should taste like. 